out deep, but men are out here behaving that way. Men are out here it's behaving nasty. like women. Yes. And it's, it yeah. is nasty. And it is, it is bad. But at the end of the day, you there's out no here. reason, my you nigga. Out here. <laughs> you out here. I don't know what we could say, but uh, this is how I'll frame this. You are slowly edging your way on that, that famed, acclaimed list of Nick Cannon is on that list. Bow Wow is on that list. Of what list? Drake is on that list. Well, who are these guys? Do- what were these guys doing? Trey Songs is on that list. Is this list. the sniper list? I, I'm, I, it's unfair for me to even title it because that's like, but there's a list. These gentlemen are on it. You are were slow. you on the list? I would say no. <laughs> are you saying no because you know it's a marriage thing? No, I would say no. I don't, sorry, I don't feel, I'm sorry, Sam. I'm going to try I don't, to I don't, I'm <laughs> saying but I don't feel I'm deserving of, of this list. This, that's, that list right there, Joe, my nigga. Y'all there niggas. was a time. Ray J. When Joe was out here Ray sniping J. the world. We're not going to act like there wasn't a time when Joe was the DC sniper. Getting to know. But that was, that was old Joe. You know, know what I'm the saying? The new sex. Joe is, you new know. New old Joe is washed. I just want to wear my funny I didn't hat. even say that. I'm just saying that was the old Joe. The old Joe was reckless and wild. He was just. All right, it I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm put too much information out there. I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> my, my first question for you, sir, is how are you? How have you been since I've seen you, since I've seen you last? I'm good, man. No, I see you're good, nigga. I'm- <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, hey, I know it's good. I, I, I saw you. I dapped you up. We taped it, so it's documented. And then you hit these niggas with an outfit change on them just to show the drip on them. Nah, you know what it is, man? It's like, yo, I, I, I did... You know how sometimes you see press runs and then you see the guy in the same outfit? You're like, okay, he had a it's press nasty. day that it's day. Nasty. My thing is, it's just like, yo, just, just, this is a new show. It's you. It's a new You know, look. we come from like, you know, yes. I had to do it, right? Like, yeah, you know, I, I ain't wear not, this outfit all day. I ain't day. even seen those. <laughs> this is for you. Those. I ain't even seen those. Oh, these? Nah, shout out to Presser. Presser got me these for my birthday. Shout out to Presser. You got man. me these Louis for my birthday. Okay. Love, man. So, let's see. Let's go back here. You changed your phone number. I was sad. I had to. Why? Because you made a lot of money. That's what y'all niggas that, were doing. But it wasn't that. It was like somebody kept leaking my number. And then it was just like one of those things where I just couldn't take it. I was just like, bro. Might leak my number last week. But it was like a continuous, like, and I didn't even know the person. Just, they just had my number. Mm, that's and they stuff. had enough credibility. That's that list. Yeah, it was that's one of those. the stuff that comes you know? with that list. <laughs> the list, you know, oh. the sniper list. So I saw, I saw, you, I saw you at our Flex, my, our Flex video shoot. Mm. We were both beefing with Drake. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. Uh, it was a good time. It was a good night. And that wasn't our focus, even though the blogs made it appear that way. Mm-hmm. Shortly after, though, you went on this reconciliation tour of seemingly mending all of the issues that people thought you had publicly. Was that a conscious decision or was that just organically, yo, we, we getting old, we mature, we out here? You mean like when we squashed it or me going Just you squashing it. It wasn't just him at the time. It just seemed you just got into some real zen, peaceful type shit where I'm on my music and nobody's going to take me away from my past. What it it really was and what I think it it really came came down to was, you know, I'm from Toronto. Drake is from Toronto. And our niggas are from Toronto. And it was coming to a place where it was just like, we're not about to just be face beefing every time we see each other. And it was coming to a place where it was about to start getting bad on both sides. And it was like, you know, like sometimes like in those movies, in the mafia movies, when the two bosses got to make a call and go, we're fucking up the money now. Mm -hmm. Because niggas are going to start getting hurt and things are going to start going left and right. And it was just like, what what are we even beefing for? And then when we had that conversation, it was just like, well, I was what about to say, for, you know? because interestingly enough, it's the irony of, of beef. Sometimes you only beef with a nigga that you have so much respect for. And once you get past this the beef. True. This is true. It's, it's nothing like, but love. That's yeah, the thing about it. You know Drake would be a fan of Tory records. And you know that you would be a fan of Drake records. Mm-hmm. Like it just, once you get past the personalization of course, I mean, of it, they always say that like the people that you, that you beef with at the start is because you guys have a lot in common. Right, and it's weird for you to see somebody who gets away with the shit that you're supposed to get away with, mm-hmm. or who does the things. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And 
I think that that little thing is also a part of what made us so close. You feel mm -hmm. me? Because like there's things I don't talk to no other rap niggas about, but I'll bring them to him because it's like we already beefed. <laughs> we're, gonna do it again. we're not gonna do yeah. it again. Be so it's like at the end of the day, he says some certain things to me that's like, okay, I know you're talking to me from a real standpoint because I know that's some shit you wouldn't say in an interview or in a, you know what I'm saying? But you telling me, mm -hmm. I say some shit to him that I wouldn't say, but I tell it to him because I, I know he's gonna understand it and at least be able to explain it to me from a certain standpoint. So it kind of it kind of is weird because at the starting it was like this. Uh, animosity there, but then later on down the line, he ended up being somebody that helped that me. That you confide in. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I could talk to and, and figure certain things out, you know? Did you find professionally that when you guys mended, there was a large community that was now ready to see you differently? Um, I definitely, time, I definitely thought about that. Y'all gotta remember, and I don't think niggas really understand like what I was actually facing at the time. For me to be a new artist to what the world was, you know, not my core fans, because I was already selling out shows before Interscope and mm -hmm. doing certain things. Like, but for me to come as a new artist with, at the time, what I had was one record. Every artist in the game at that point had had their cosign from Drake. Got it. So everybody was like, I want to fuck with him, but I'm not going to fuck up my Drake connect. <laughs> so you got to think about it. You got to look at how many people, and I'm not saying these were the people that, that thought that, but you got to think about who was in the game. You got to think about it. You like, ain't got to tell me. I called a nigga one time to get a beat to diss Drake, and the nigga told me, fam, Ain't gonna be none of that. <laughs> I, was like, I can't even get the beat. So I understand. Now, you know, it's like you gotta think about it. Every young, uh, or I shouldn't say every, but most of the young cats that are out right now, whether or not they're still relevant from four years ago or they're relevant today, a lot of them have that Drake cosign or Drake did your first song yeah. or he introduced sure. you or it didn't pop until Drake touched it. Yeah. You know, every a lot of people have that. So his ears all of those, to the ground that way. Exactly. And all of those people kind of were just like boycott Tory Lanez at the time. So yeah. I was just basically moving off of my own, my own hits, yes. my own records. Like, just like, yo, I don't care what none of y'all niggas was talking about. I'm going to have this many records regardless. I knew I would be sitting here at this time regardless because I'm in the studio. That was part of the reason why me and you connected so well because it was like, you know, I, you was like, you know, I fuck with you because you just going on your own and you just don't give a fuck. That and part that, was apparent. And that mentality was was in both of us. And I think, you know, that's what that's what kind of even at the start had made us had clicked together. You know what I'm saying? It was that rogue mentality. And when I bumped into you at South by that one year, you it was a crowded club, so we only had a little bit to kick it, but you could just tell your faith was really high. And for me, that's important in a new artist mm -hmm. because this industry is gonna try you. So I knew you were super talented. I knew I was a huge fan of everything I had heard up until that point. Mm. But when I met you and your faith was super high, I said, oh, shit, they're not going to stop this kid. Mm. And now we got outfit changes. <laughs> now we got outfit changes. We got hairlines. We got fucking... <laughs> we got, you niggas, you, you know, know? don't feel like you niggas is weird? Nah. Tell the truth, man. I don't know about the other niggas. Because I don't you, know what everybody it's did. The funny hold nigga. on, time out, time out. Hold on, hold on. I don't know. You know what they no, do. No, no, here's the thing. Here's the great thing about this. There's a lot of niggas doing some other funny shit. I don't have a unit on my head. <laughs> You're not going to catch me like that. You'll never catch me with I don't know the weave. different wig styles that men are doing. I don't know either because I don't do that. But what's that? This is my hair. You want to touch it? Pause. I'll just play with you. Oh, I was going to touch that shit. Go I'm bald, nigga. You can touch my it's hair, man. The corner, this is real this hair is in the corners. This is my hair, fam. This ain't that shit. This is my brother, so I'm letting him touch my hair. Yeah, no, I'll Any other him. interview would have been this like, not interview you know stuff. what I'm saying? <laughs> that, no, that's hard. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. It's like, I met a doctor that does hair restoration. I saw a tiger told you. And that nigga is specifically for African-American and Latino hair. Mm -hmm. So basically, I was, I was going away on my corners. As all of us. As he helped, yeah. they helped me do the res restoration. It's not, Bo it's not like Bosley though. Like you know, Bosley Hair Club, all of that stuff. Yeah, for the that white people. Yeah, it's, that shit is. That it's like shit, the lemon that's tree. when they slice your head and do all this weird shit. I didn't do that. 
You know what I'm saying? Like my shit is more so natural. Like a lot of a lot of a lot of this really even comes from what they call PRP shots. This is for y'all I'm familiar who with be that. thinking about you know your hair and your edges and stuff. What they do is you know they'll take uh, some blood out of your arm, um, and mm-hmm. basically the plasma from your blood they'll re-inject Replant it into it. your hair into like your edges or whatever the case is, and the plasma from your blood re. Uh, Pretty much wakes up your your dead cells in your hair. I only know this yeah. because my cousin is a doctor and he's into this. Shout out to Michael Paul, but he's doing all Michael this. Paul, Go see him if you see love. him. But that's the only reason I know but this. But that's so. you know that's and that's a real thing. And like, but how do I know? This is what I'm asking because you look mm-hmm. great. Uh, Tiger looks great. There's a few niggas that look great. There's a few niggas that look. But nuts. see, I went up to Tiger and I said, "Yo, Tiger." I said, bro, what do you do to keep your hair like, like your hair looking like that? That nigga's beautiful, and he made taste. <laughs> For real. Like, I'm like, what are you doing to keep your hair like that? And he's just like, yo, I, you know, I use like Moroccan argan oil and shit. And I was just oh, like, wow. all right, cool. That's 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 must be like a because you're half Chinese. It, it works for you, you know. That shit don't work in my hair, like you know. So I found. Um, a certain list of products Dex. that I use in my hat in my hair. My hair is actually like this long right now, but I put it down because it grows so unevenly that it's like if I don't put it down, I look kind of crazy. How expensive I mean? is this? Because that's a few procedures you have to do to do that, right? Yeah, I had to do two. Two, okay, got it. and that's a really expensive thing, or can broken? It can do be it? really expensive depending on your hair, but it's like if you if you don't have that big of a problem, or if your situation isn't that bad, you know. It could be fairly cheap for you, you know. What is your favorite chicks tape to date? Five. I have to give it. You to have you. to say I, that. I, no, but I one. don't have to say that. I love the chicks tape too. I don't care about three or four. I love. That two well, I shouldn't four. say I don't care about three or four, but. Because don't shit on three either. Yeah, three was very two. serious. But two and four actually for me might be my. Really, four. Y- y- the thing about four is this, right? Four was the beginning of when like I started like really wilding out with the transition. No, three was really, but Yeah, I'm about to say. Yeah, three was really, but four is like there's certain parts of four that like to this day I'm just like and sometimes you know what it is too? Sometimes it's when you record them. It's the it's what's going on around you that makes it classic. It's like when you listen to the music, what memory does it take you to? And that's part of the reason why some songs are classic. For instance, you know, Jay Z the Dynasty album it's not one of his best albums, but that's one of my favorite albums because that year my mom died and I remember it so vividly mm-hmm. that it became one of my favorite albums. In Jay's defense, you know? some would say that that, is, uh, that was the Rockefeller collab album. I don't give a damn what it was. That was that, honestly, that was one of my favorite albums. You know what I'm saying? It mm-hmm. had some of the, some of the dopest uh, records on there. But, you know... So if that's the case, then... Then tell us why this Keisha woman has tormented you for all of these years, man. Well, God, my first girlfriend, my Jesus. first love, my first love, her name was Keishante, but I called her Keish. Um, Keish fucked you up in the head, my nigga. <laughs> nah, but, I know this is all new money sitting here now, but I'm trying to dig a little deep. Nah, but Keish see, I, did it to you. But see, the thing about Keish was like, oh, I know. It wasn't, it wasn't like exactly how I explained it on the projects isn't exactly how. Um, how it went, but I do look at, you know, a first love situation and I do put that in, you know, in character in some sort of small way. I don't necessarily mean the, the character Keisha is my first girlfriend or, you know, anything but like that. But the things that you experienced. But the things, some certain things that I experienced, you know, the love of it, the the hate of it, the, the, the ups and the downs, they're a part of that, you know what I'm saying? And I think that it's good for me to be able to place those in places and still be able to say what I want to say without it having to be directly towards somebody or a girlfriend that I had previously. You I know think what I'm that's saying? That's super dope. It helps me. It helps me to just say it, say whatever the fuck I want to say, you know? And it's a great way to not ever have to pay one specific individual about a story <laughs> or some shit. But yeah, but like Keisha, 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 um, I think in the story, and it'll be the Keishas that do it too. It's the Keishas and the Ks. Honestly, it's all the girls with the Ks in their name. It's true. Whose idea was it? This is so much fun that I get to do this 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 uh, interview, for lack of a better term, because I'm such a fan of this chicks tape shit. And that's this and, chicks and tape yo, shit I gotta is thank you. I, I gotta you. thank you for like the last conversation we had about was it Bryson and the whole like R and B shit. 
And I got to thank you for sticking up for me because at the end of the day, like, I, and like, I don't like to keep on touching on this, but like the same thing that Ma said, like, I feel you when you're saying what you're saying about the projects, but it's like, nigga, if you have not, have you not heard any of the Chicks tapes? Like, how dare you come out of your mouth and say, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I, I just feel like, yo, for all predominant R&B projects, when you want to compare me to somebody else that is an R&B singer, you got to bring up my all R&B projects. Don't. Don't try to throw Don't it make it like an album rest. because I was with Interscope and they cut certain things because certain samples can't make it and your album can't be what you want it to be because you got to clear this and that. Like, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think at the end of the day, both of us are incredible artists. But at the same time, it's like when somebody pulls up, you know, what is compared to each other, there's more music over here. That's that was my only like well, thing, and, and I'm well, glad that you stood up for that because it's like, damn, cuz you acting like well, nigga and, ain't still going four or well, five years down well, the line. Well, and that's part of the reason that you know my, me and Maul will always disagree there. See how early in this conversation I brought it back to your faith when I met you and how you would need it later on. Mm -hmm. To me, that's what that's what holds Bryson back. Not that he's void of faith. Mm -hmm. But the rigors that come with this music business, you're going to have to ju uh, juggle that and perform. Facts. The fans may not know what you're going through behind the scenes, this, these are facts. but you're going to go through it. You still got to perform. At no point will they say, oh, you're not performing because of X, Y, Z. So the same way Bryson is just going through things and may or may not be having a hard time, I don't know. What we do know is the output of music has slowed down. Mm -hmm. And with you, it's the opposite. And I you said, have had a lot of shit to deal with. Dream Doll <laughs> tore your ass up for a week. <laughs> yeah, hey, did. listen, part of my left. Dream Doll was on your ass. She was on my ass, boy, with somebody else's her. lyrics. But, don't um, do that. But check don't do out. that. But check don't do out. that to me, Dream Doll. Let, let, let me get back to... Um, <laughs> and so... I'm gonna get, we gonna get, we gonna get there. into everything. No like, this, is like right, sitting, this is like me sitting here with my cousin. Like we're gonna get into everything today. So first is the first thing that you said. Um, I think the thing is, like, I sat on a plane, right, with Bryson. And the plane took off and we talked from literally the starting of the ride to the plane landed. And it kind of gave me more of an understanding on him because I never understood like, Bro, you do so many numbers. You you know you 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 do you know a lot, and he kind of gave me a, a more of an understanding on it. And you know, I think the same thing you're saying, regardless of whatever you know happens on the outside, the output of music still has to be it still has to be consistent, go. no matter what you know. And that kid to this day, bro, he he'll come to my house, bro, and play me some fucking fire. I'm sure like, this kid done played me some shit that was just like, yo, what the the fuck is wrong with you? And then you know he'll be like, "Yeah, I'm. I don't know about this shit though. You know, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm gonna start a YouTube page, nigga. What? One time I had to like, I really argued with him like for like a good like ten minutes. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, my nigga? Like, you're you're too good to be, you know. And so like, for me, I just want to be respected on the level of consistency because how many artists have we seen come in, come out by the second press? Uh, press run, it's like no one cares. Every time I do fucking press, nigga, I end up everywhere. Anytime I, I'm in an interview, anytime, you know, I say certain things, it, it's relevant enough for us to all post it. Yes, yes. For True. years. And so, like, my thing is, is I just want to be respected on the fact that I've been consistent enough for people to feel like that. Do you think you're not? Uh, what, consistent? Respected on that level. I feel like, um... I'm a little bit under-respected, a little bit slept on, but that's not really... Is that something that artists just feel like they have to carry? Because from nah. your perspective, it would seem like everybody's called for the future. You've, you've done shows with everybody because you're a festival king. You ran around, so you see all these niggas. Like, I didn't come here to be number two. I didn't come You told me that a few years ago. I didn't come here to be number two, and I still am not here to be number two. And that's the only reason why I'm relevant. Like, people think that I just want to be, I'm cool with this, like, position of, like, 
where I'm at, that's a big misconception. I don't like where I'm at. I don't like to be here. This isn't cool. Yeah. For me to yeah, have the talents going. that I have, I don't belong here. I belong at the top. Meaning I didn't come here to be a second place, third place nigga. Mm-hmm. If, like, who fucking gets up every day in the morning and says, you know what, today I'm going to be second place? Who the fuck does that? My whole people. thing is it's like if I don't feel that the stats can't prove that I'm the hottest or I'm the top of the top of my game, then I'm just not there yet. Then what but do it doesn't you, mean anything. It just means I got to work more. Well, I was about to say, then what then my you, label got to be better, but we'll talk about that at a different time. Well, what do you have to say to the people that say all of the numbers are manufactured? What do you mean? You just said, if my numbers don't indicate X, Y, Z for me, then I got to work harder or my label has to work harder or whatever. Uh, what do you have to say to the people that say all of the numbers that we're seeing Produced from Billboard, from the streaming services. It's all manufactured, fabricated, induced. It is definitely induced. Look at these niggas' likes on Instagram. Look at these niggas' uh, streams. Look at the... I'm not saying that certain people don't stream. But, but you don't measure yourself by these numbers because you've always had this confidence before you had I've the numbers. I've always went organically, too. Like, I've never cared about, you know, when this guy's shit says 65 million and my shit says... Three million. Because of what I've realized is me and this guy with 65 million are going to go to the same place. <laughs> and, and, and he's going to go on stage with this song that only him and his demographic know that 65 million people don't actually know. And I'm going to come here with my three million organic views <laughs> and they're going to know. I've seen that show. You know? And so you got to understand, like, I'm not worried when a nigga has 100 million views on this fucking video and my shit has 25 million views. Cool. You my 25 million are real. You know, I went to YouTube the other day, and Talk to these niggas, man. they went to, they, 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 they showed me a big uh, scope, right, about, like, artists, and which artist was really, like, as far as reaction and engagement, which fans were actually engaging, and, you know, the first thing I'm thinking is, like, okay, Kendrick or Cole, or, you know, the fucking M&Ms, and I'm thinking all these big, big, big people, mm-hmm. and they said, uh, Tori, you're second on this list. They said the first person that's strangely and oddly enough right now for the most engagement, uh, I think it was, it was either Young Boy and Little Dirk. Little Dirk. But you know well, what? NBA Young Boy is the king of I YouTube. want you to understand, though, it's because content is coming out on YouTube and people are actually engaging in their videos, actually watching their videos for a certain amount of time. They told me, when you see all these people with these videos for uh, 100 million and 200 million, first of all, we can't really attest if all of them are real, but the ones that are real, this is the stats on them. And they said, people are watching the average artist's video for about 35, I think, to 48 seconds. Mm. 35 to 48 seconds. My engagement, Little Dirk, NBA Young Boy, they're watching the videos from two minutes to two minutes and 34 seconds. Mm. We have good videos. You have to think about that now. These people are watching my video all the way to the end and only watching 35 seconds of yours. Not very invested over there. They're not very invested. Not, they're not invested. But to the world, the numbers look incredible. And that's, what, that's why I kind of, it's like the, the, the game is in such a, a weird uh, little spot because... Because people need these numbers to validate how they're negotiating exactly. in there. Exactly. That's why I don't, you know, if, if, if there was a way, I wish there wasn't Instagram. Because Instagram validates people that don't need to be validated. You know and, what I'm saying? <laughs> and on top of that, Instagram is, is and has not been very fair with their algorithms and, and how, they, how they work. 100%. Too many times I wake up on a Thursday and they show me Monday night's bartenders. Mm. Like, it's off. <laughs> it's off. How they're distributing that, we'll get into that another time. It's, but that YouTube engagement shit is fun. So you are into all of the analytics of everything. Yes, definitely. You know, Still I, very hands-on with it all. I'm, I might be the most hands-on artist. And when the Chicks tape drops, I'm going to come back here and we're going to do another interview. And when that interview, when we do that interview, we'll know a lot more about what I have to say. 
But for right now, we're gonna keep it calm. We're not gonna we're not gonna put nobody down. We're not gonna do things like that. No, there's no one. Everything but is awesome. I think on the YouTube side, and I think on the music side, and I think on the engagement side. I, I one thing I have to pride myself on is there's a wide variety of people that have stayed on board from the time that I started till now, and are still invested in the same way because the quality of the music is the same. The quality of the videos are the same, <clears throat> and it stays consistent, you know? That's why I don't get mad at your glow up, because normally when artists glow up, they sacrifice the music. I have yet to see that occur with you, and... I refuse. I was just telling you, I've, I heard Chicks Tape 5, and I'm really impressed. I'm not saying that because you're in front of me. Uh, oh, I know. You would tell you, me, it's, this nigga would tell me it's trash if it was trash. Yeah. He would tell me, right here, clean, in front of all y'all... This is trash. But I think many of us Tory Lanez fans over the years have had the same question. If you've heard all the Chicks tapes, and, and we're familiar with how you utilize the samples, and we know the business that's involved in that, but your fans are like, yo, if he could just put this project out. Out. If he could just sell. What sucks about me, bro, about Tory Lanez, the one thing that sucks about Tory Lanez is that his best projects are not his, yeah, man. They're not out online. They're yeah. not like my albums are not my best projects, bro. They're 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 albums that I feel like are incredible albums. But if you really want to know Tory Lanez, it comes from the mixtapes. Mm -hmm. It comes from the Chicks tape two, three, four, five. It comes from the New Toronto's. It comes from all of the, the the freestyles. It comes from all of the other things. And that's how you really get to know me. You know, um, I feel like. You know, when you get when you get signed and you come to these major labels, you know, um, a lot of the times you're not as free to do certain things because you can't just go at it with a rebel attitude. For instance, there's a song on the Chicks tape that I had to take off uh, at the end of my body, the sample uh, Yes Sir from Pretty Ricky. Yo, you smoked that Yes Sir record. At the end of it, there's this old 80s sounding song that I had to be removed because of all of these, you know, legalities when it comes down to clearing. Mm. You don't, you can't just be as free as you want on these albums, you know, and that's, that's probably... That's the creative handicap. I think for, 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 for me and for a guy who's just a rebel who just doesn't give a fuck, that's probably the worst, the worst thing for me. So... I do want people to understand, you're not gonna get my best projects out of my albums. My albums are incredible projects, don't get me wrong, but they're not my best work. I put my best work into things that I can be completely free about. Luckily, this was a happy medium where I could be completely free. They were gonna trip about certain things, but it's not enough things for me to be bugging about and feel like I didn't get my shit off. How many, how many, um, how many, uh, sample clearance issues did you run into? You said you cut the I had end to clear of yes, sir. 16 artists. No, no. No, I know. We're going to get into that. Okay, so basically I ran into about four, four issues. Just things like, basically like, some songs now had to be split in half. Like, uh, we cleared the sample and this part you added to the end of it, even though it's beautiful and sounds like a million dollars, now you have to cut it off because... We're gonna have to re-clear the sample because they didn't hear this they didn't version, hear this part, yeah. and this and that's gonna take eight days, and then you're gonna miss the pre-order, or you're gonna miss the. Don't you hate it? It's all shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Up. Like it's just it's all a bunch of shut the fuck yes. up. But at the end of the day, you gotta do these things in order for things to be legal. Yeah. And so you know it's 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 kind and of you like you and your team knew that. There was a big bag to be had if there was some type of way <laughs> so to much. make this it. legal. Exactly. And so I think just getting everybody in the right place and in the right state of mind and having people just be okay with me what remixing their yes. fucking best Your songs, hit. my nigga. Like, you know that how, shit is tough. I think you know that how nerve wracking that shit was? Yeah, some niggas can hate. Like, you never know the energy like, you're going to get. Like, bro, you don't know. It's true. You don't know, fam. Like, you don't know. And then some niggas, you know, we're not going to go through anybody, but some niggas have, you know, the issue of like, I don't know, man. That makes me feel old. You know, and it's like. Oh, man. You know, it's like, ah. Uh, That's corny. You know, I don't want you to ever feel like that because this song is so great. 
Yeah. You know, and everybody who worked on this project, I don't look at any of you guys as old, old at all. You guys played the fucking the years of my childhood. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I don't look at any of you guys like that. So, you know, it's 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 just dealing with with everything that comes with it. But we did it. We got through it. You know, shout out to to Payne and Sasha and Troy and you know Sasha, everybody that helped. Sasha gonna get it done. Sasha gonna get it done. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's one thing about Salute. Sasha. Sasha Salute gonna Sasha. get it done. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas can talk all they want to talk about me and this, that, and the third. But my manager, he gonna get it done. You know what I'm saying? Well, management gonna get it done. It's it's true. You know. Let's 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 end this right this second. For you, Joe see or Jagged Edge? For me, Jagged Edge. Not because Joe to see is not equivalent. Not them niggas, yeah. But it wasn't my it wasn't my time. Yeah, I hate when job. niggas keep coming up here and they're like, I should say this, so let me say this. No, oh, just gotta you know, go to fuck that. Jagged Edge that. played more of a a piece of my childhood. I know, because you keep you know? smoking them jagged edge samples. And that's why I had to get I had to I had to do it right. And this time, like this. you know what I'm saying? Like I had to do it right this time. This shit is this this project, <laughs> I don't want dick ride, cause fuck you. <laughs> this project, man, this shit touched my my soul with But that's what I needed it to some, feel I'm like such an arm. But that's what, you know what's crazy? Oh, I always wanted to ask you. You being somebody that, you know, records in this time. You've seen these niggas when they were actually popping. You've been around these niggas. You know all their fucking egos probably. You've probably seen them shits firsthand. Mm, yes. But how does it feel for you? Do you feel, and it's okay if it, because I know you're going to give me the real, and that's why I just want to ask you, like, do you feel like I captured the essence of the time? That's my biggest thing. Don't get me wrong. Of course, things are new now, and things are innovated, and of course, the way I sample is how I sample. No, you do But my whole thing was to still capture the essence of the time. And so I want to ask somebody from this era, at least, you know what I'm saying? Last week, not last week, I'm lying. A month ago, I'm hanging out with my oldest son who raps, he does music. I heard it. And he, said, he tells me he's putting the EP out and he said he got some other songs that's not in the EP and one of those songs was a Pump It Up remix. Mm. And I said, well, how does that sound? And he said, it sounds like you old niggas, but I jazzed it up, and it was some young nigga twist on it. He didn't say those words, but he let me hear it. <laughs> and the first thing I thought was, damn, that's ill how this 18-year-old young man could take a song from 03 and make it feel fresh in 2019. Like, yeah. what a gift yeah. that is. Yeah, like, and I didn't I tell him that, I feel that, but it's the first thing I thought. So now the second your project comes on, before it even comes on, I'm looking at the names there. And that's why you are, you are an impressive nigga, man, because boy, it's easy to fuck these names up. <laughs> Everybody can't get on a, a song with T-Pain. I'm being 100%, honest. 100%. That nigga's one of the, the goats of this shit to me. 100%. Y'all took that fucking, and then that's my other rule, to stay away from classics. Stay away from classics. Stay that, away from classics. Yo, you got to understand. As an artist. You got to understand. I... I'm on the same type of time. There's certain songs where I, even when I did it, this time I was scared to do it. I, I know because like, I saw the video that you and Payne put yeah, out. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to let this nigga hear this. Like, I don't know. know. Saying, like, yeah. it's, it's, it's weird. Like, imagine Ashanti pulling up. Wait, stop. To the studio. Foolish. Imagine, Foolish how, imagine how I had to tell her, like, yo, I literally had to do the beat in front of Ashanti, literally in about no cap, 15 minutes. 15 minutes I had to chop it up right in front of her and yeah, make her she, believe in yeah, it. Because she's about her time. In the I business. literally, she's about her time <laughs> yes, and she she's not fucking around. Yeah. Chopped it up in 15 minutes. I ran in the booth. Foolish Laid the first shit down, you know? Foolish y'all smoked. And this is just off memory. The end of this project went crazy to me. And by that, 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 uh, you got old Wayne, you got vintage Wayne. You found a way to get vintage Wayne and vintage Lloyd. Lloyd, <laughs> who's another one of my R&B goats, and y'all smoked that. And then I wasn't ready for a song after that, because I was like, you should have ended this here. This I ain't is gonna too- lie, it did feel like the, the ending, but the- But that but 112 song. to touch song. the 112, fam. And you let I him rock, to- you let him sing. <laughs> Yo, how, who, how did you go about, because I'm dick eating, how did you go about Picking. How did you go about picking 
these artists and samples. Was it you or was it Picasso? The thing about Picasso, right, and, and I'm so glad you, glad you brought him up. The thing about Picasso is Picasso doesn't really, he's a Cuban nigga from Miami. He doesn't really know half of these songs that we're doing. Like, so that'd be the funniest shit. Like when I'm like, nah, yo, yo, play, you have to take this part. Let's put it here. Let me hop on this. Let me press some keys. Let me, let me do what I got to do. But we have to take this part. And he'll be like, is this a important part? <laughs> be yes. like, nigga, yes, nigga. It's important. This is the part that everybody, trust me, we're going to make him go crazy with this. And... I think just the fact that because he doesn't know, it, it leaves me open to be able to be like, no, let's not just, this is not how the sample flip goes. This is not the most important part. This is the most important part. Let's flip it like this. Let's add the drums like this. You know, um, there's uh, footage that we're going to drop. I don't know when this is going to drop at this point, but fuck it. There's footage that we're going to drop that shows like the moments when I was creating the beats with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you finally get that this time to understand, like, yo, Sasha. like... Sasha! <laughs> Sasha! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it's, it's, it's really, it's really, it was really fun just to be like, yo, <laughs> this is the best song. This is, this is my, uh, you know, from the top, I said 2000 to 2007. I was like, I'm not going. But that gave you the dudes. That gave you it, Mario. What else was it going to give me? That gave I'm you like, this is everything I need. Because the thing about it is, is like, at that point, then what? I was, Trey, like, I was like, okay, you know what? These are two. This is what really happened. I was like, these are two classic. Niggas are going to get mad at me. And I was like, you know what? Let's give niggas no reason to get mad at me. Let's put the niggas on the songs. Genius. I thought that you, you know, were lying when you said that that is what was happening. It's, I was like, man, it, shut the fuck it's up, so man. It's fake. Come on, man. Yo, Joe, that's, you don't have to sell that's a why, record this That's way. why I know this nigga's my brother. Because literally, when we made Chicks Tape 2, Chicks Tape 3, and Chicks Tape 4, we would always say, imagine we got the artists on... on we stopped the, we literally stop it mid, mid-imagination. mid Like, nigga, no, that's, that, that's not going to happen. It's impossible, bro. Just shut the fuck up. How many of them were aware of... The classic this series is. Who who knew? Yo, I had to. Nah, there's like no. There was a lot of people that just didn't know what it was, but they were just off the sheer yeah, like, strength. yo, I fuck with you, Tori, on some like you make records shit. I'm a fuck with it. But even like Ashanti, like uh, before we got her on the cover, like she called me and was like, yo, listen, if you about to try to do some some weird millennials. <laughs> Like type shit. Don't even like you know what I'm saying. Like don't even bring that shit to me. You know I'm on my new shit. I'm, I'm and mm-hmm. I was like I completely respect you. And you know even with Ashanti, I had to be like okay, look, this is what it is. Like I don't know if you you know you're you're familiar with this, but this is this project is bigger than me. Yeah, it's literally thing. it's bigger it's than Tory Lanez. Like the, the project has nothing like it's bigger than me. Mm-hmm. And and I don't think she was able to really grasp it until like probably couple she grasped it on the phone but it was like a couple days ago when she finally posted the cover and and, And she saw the and she saw the reaction and and i think you know that kind of showed her like yo this is this is big when i showed her the other of uh the other covers as well um chick state four you know i sampled what's love Mm -hmm. so she was like this cover i remember she's like okay this is what so she vaguely had an understanding of what it was you know what i'm saying but it wasn't that i had to really explain it to too many people once I had T Pain and Ashanti, I just finessed the rest of the way through. I called niggas like, yo, I got, I got everybody work. on their Times Classics, nigga. Trey like, I got. Work. 112 will work. Everybody's gonna work. You know, it was just like, and plus, like, when I say T Pain did Sprung, Ashanti did Foolish. What else is different? What are you gonna about? be like, nah, I'm not gonna do my classic? These two classic ass niggas just did their shit. Uh, are, you know? are there, is there anybody that. You would have liked to get on there, but maybe for time reasons or schedule purposes, it just couldn't happen. Kelly Rowland uh, <laughs> did a verse. I sampled the wrong song. Mm. And she did a verse to the wrong song. Oh. And that was my fault. Got I would have loved for Kelly Rowland to been on this project. Um, that she been did. Nice. She redid Go for me. Go, 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 yeah, go. Yeah. We have a hard one. I ain't gonna lie. She, she killed it. Um, but I felt like like right when she was finished, I was like, nah, the song that I should have done was Dilemma. Or I should at least did Here We Go with Trina and her or something. You know, because I felt like two, when she did Go, it was already 2010, 2011. It was too outdated. It was too, 
in the future. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I was just like, damn, you know, and I couldn't touch any Destiny's Child shit because I, I was like, I know. I don't want to try to clear this. This is a But d- Kelly you know, has joints on the low that people Kelly might not know got about. Joints. Kelly is the one on the low. I was on her first time. Like, where are you? Hmm? <laughs> I'm old, man. I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> I was thinking that on the way here. On the way yeah. here, I was like, yo. All of these television shows, they're remaking all of the old television shows I grew up on. All of the movies, they're remaking, remaking all of the everything. movies. And in music, we remaking music. I mean, I don't feel old, but this is old nigga shit. Like, <laughs> I experienced all of this before. I like it. I fuck with it. So listen, so Chicks Tape 5 is coming. Yeah. Are you worried at all about dropping with the king? Dropping with who? The king. Me? No, the king. Me? That's not who the... No, Jacquees is the king. Oh, Jacquees, Jacquees said... My cousin. I'm dropping my album. I'm fine with Jacquees saying Friday. he's the king, though. I'm really... Me, me I'm, too. Like, I'm really I'm fine with... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's real energy. I'm fine with me him too. saying he's the king. Like, the thing about it is, is like, Jaque- what niggas don't understand is, like, Jacquees sings. He doesn't do nothing else. But sing. He doesn't reach. <laughs> he doesn't do it. Like, I'm tired of niggas is coming for Jaquise, dog. I'm just not having it no, no more, Jacquees dog. Jaquise is nice. Like, leave, leave the kid alone, dog. Like, Jacquees you know what I'm saying? Jaquise is nice. The, the, like, I've and he's heard, here. He's earned it. He's and here I'm, And I'm on his album. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want it? I'm on his album. Like, we did this song called Risk It All. And, like, the thing about it is, is, like, I'm not even trying to be... That song better not be trash called Risk It All, both I of I promise that shit's fire. Okay. You gonna love it. That's one of them at the barbecue... You know what I'm That's saying? What I, like. Look you know, at that I know you thing. love the barbecue. That's why I'm. T- <laughs> That's why I'm feeling like you know what I'm saying. No, that's my shit. So like, nah, like it's 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 a fire record. But beyond the record, like, I want to touch on his talent for a split second. What what artists don't understand and what people don't understand is like, when you are moved to hop on somebody else's shit. Inspiration. It's inspiration, but if you do it better. You just have that gift. Not everybody has that gift because people all have their own uh, uh, type of demoitis. You can't do it better and sell it. Exactly. Exactly. You can't do that. You can't. Okay. But you can do it better. You can do better. But the thing about it is, it's like I just think that a lot of times people try to over uh, or, or under credit him for the remixes and they don't look at the it's not fair it's like too many of us made our way on freestyling remixes covers and that's what I'm saying like I feel like that shouldn't be frowned upon today I feel like as as a as a a kid that's coming out of Atlanta if you feel like you want to say I'm the king of R&B you know what you know why 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 I can say you know that's fine because when everybody stopped singing you kept singing nigga huh when niggas stopped singing, huh, the niggas stopped where singing. are these niggas? When Bryson stopped singing, when Party Next Door stopped singing, when I stopped singing, you were still singing. You were still singing, my nigga. You were damn near on stage. For anybody who's ever been to a, to a Jaquise concert, you were on stage doing the fucking dance routines, my nigga. Like a real R&B nigga. In his bag, yeah. So let, don't let niggas tell this nigga like, that he's not who he thinks he is in his head, because at the end of the day, if that's who he feels like, he has a, a small right to be able to say that and it to be valid because he's the only nigga who's been damn near keeping this shit alive. I'm not saying that Chris Brown and Trey Songs and all these niggas ain't here. They here. And we love them forever. But those, but those you know what I'm talking They're already we there. Yeah, we don't, they're, yeah. already, they, they're already exactly. there. They're yes. already there. Let's talk about the young niggas. Talk about these new when young six, niggas. Nine, when 6'9", when everybody was a little something, when everybody was a little something, he was still singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I turned into, fuck it, Shooters and B.I.D. and da da da. man, I hated that, man. I bet you did. Oh, my God. Niggas needed R&B for me because I talked that, that greasy, incredible R&B shit, but he was still singing. Yeah. No, and that's was. what I want to highlight. And that's why I feel like, you know, he goes out there and says, nigga, I feel like I'm the king, nigga, because at the end of the day, I keep it up. I keep it here. I still, if niggas don't want to respect me, I still keep it here. And so I gotta, I gotta respect that, and I gotta give him that. Me personally, like I'm, I'm a little bit done with the whole like I'm the best and I'm the da 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 da. Because at the end of the day, it's like, cause if you feel like I'm the best, nigga, <laughs> thank you. If you don't, 
Fuck you. <laughs> I don't yeah, care, don't my not. nigga. I just don't care. At the end of the day, time will tell. You know, so that's my take on it. And that's my take on on Kui, too. It's like, that's my brother, and I want to see him prosper. And if he ever feels like he want to say, yo, I'm the king of R&B, you have more of a right to say it than a lot of us. Because a lot of us let R&B down for a split second. I'm not going to lie. It's honest of you. Real talk. That is, that is I let it down for a split second. I felt like niggas was copying my style. I said, yo, <laughs> you niggas ain't going to get me. Mm. I'm going to stop for three years. Let's see what you niggas, where you niggas take it. Oh, that's interesting. I, I never looked at it that way. That's why I stopped. I felt like niggas was stealing my style. Literally. Like, I felt like you, niggas you was really... niggas from stealing your shit. Man. Exactly. But you know what you can do? You can stop yourself. If stop you're afforded that, you that luxury. Stop you giving can. niggas the innovation and they'll disappear. Yeah. Where are they now? You stop inspiring them. They're see gone. what you come up with on your own. But yeah. hey, guess what, guys? I'm back with Chicks Tape 5. <laughs> Chicks, let's get back to Chicks Tape 5. You know? Snapple fact about Joe Budden that not many people know. But I'm in a vulnerable sharing mood, so here it goes. If there was a, if there were, if I had like a best of me and the opposite sex highlight reel, the music that would play is probably Chris Brown Take You Down mixed with Drake's Aubrey's version of Take You Down. Aubrey's version was incredible. They both incredible. I'll be on some G shit, that one, right? That was that. I'm not bugging, right? Check out who I be with. It was some shit like that, right? Yes, that one. That one was definitely fire. That was definitely definitely fire. (laughs) Both of them, though. They both fire. I have a mix somewhere where I merged them both together. Here I am riding. Well, not driving because I have a driver, but the driver's Mm. driving. I'm not looking at the Chicks Tape 5 track list. And what smacks me in the head? You guessed it. Take you down. And Chris is on there. And Chris is on that bad boy. And he's singing the hook the same way. And he's bugging out on there. This is just after I bought 40 songs off Indigo. Then he came out with the Indigo Deluxe of the 49 deluxe. songs. The I deluxe. Go, hey, I bought that Deluxe just for that Tory record on that motherfucker. That's a good <laughs> fucking record. And now here y'all come take you down where y'all both flipping. Y'all both flipping. Definitely. Y'all went, we all went Definitely. crazy. Thank Were you. y'all together when you did it? Did you email I didn't it? Think, I didn't think I was going to get the record. Why? Uh, not, not because like I don't think Chris would do it. Chris is, Chris, me and Chris have knocked out nine. He works. Bro, that nigga works. That nigga knocked out nine records with me in one day. Nine. Um, damn, they did a whole mixtape in one day. Um, but Chris, I, I, I didn't send it to him. My cousin did. My cousin Uno sent it to him. And Uno be on his A and R shit, and and he sent it to Chris, and it was like one of those when I had already finished the project. I was like, "Oh, the project's done." <laughs> I heard my verse to take you. This is gonna be the craziest thing. I heard my verse to take you down, and I didn't like it. I thought I didn't. I was like, I don't know. It was like it was punchy. It was like it was. It didn't. It it wasn't. I didn't like it. I heard it back mixed again when Chris sent his version. Different and feeling. It felt different. And I was like, I'd have to be a fool to not put this on a project. This is one of the love making anthems of our, you know, our whole time. It's so true. I did it, and and I'm happy that, at the way that it was done. You know what I'm saying? No, it's 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 crazy. I, I'm really shocked that this project is this good. I'll be honest with you. Thank you. I, I, I really. <laughs> How many of these interview niggas that you sit with? Because I know you on uh, press run. How many of these niggas are familiar with? Just what this is exactly. There was only like two of them that I actually sent the project to. I think that that actually like heard this shit in the entirety and they were blown away. Yeah. And I think that for people, what's great about this project besides any other chick's tape is like beyond what I did, these people have come back. And I think that, you know, when you get that standpoint out of it and when you really realize it's like it it has to hit you because my my, like there's a moment where it will hit you because that's the fucked up thing about it you can listen to the project four or five times but there's some moment where it's going to hit you that yo this is really ashanti coming back on foolish this is really mario this is really you know lloyd and little wayne on you this is really these moments and you can't grasp that the first time even if you try to and you're like, oh, I can't believe it, you won't really grab it. It has to hit you. 
And this is the first time I've had a project where there's something there that's a factor that's like, it's going to hit you whether or not you like it or not if you keep listening to this project. You know? Someone, your fans have to want to know about the difference in approach in you creating your albums and creating these with Picasso where it seems you're a little more hands-on. Like you said, you're on the keys. You're instructing somebody that maybe never heard I, the song. I'm a big fan of relief. Meaning, whether or not, uh, you know, it's like my first album where it's cinematic relief from the music for a, se for a split second. For You know, I realized, like, too much music is overwhelming. Sure enough. And I realized, like, there's got to be something that drags people into wanting to listen to it. So I have to, you know, then look at every aspect of an album and say, you know, I'm big on... The, re the relief that this gives me, not only listening to songs, but listening to what's around it. So when it comes down to me creating a project, especially like one like this, I was scared. I was very scared. I was, I was like, you know, I didn't do this project in about three years. I haven't brought out a chick's tape, anything r and I haven't brought out anything R&B. True. You've been so popping long. pop song in your ass around town. I was town. rapping against niggas. I was battling niggas. But that was fun. You know? That's fun. It was great. But even when I looked at my statistics and my analytics, there was a drop in women. Women when needed... When you were doing the... Uh, got it, got it, got it. Because women needed R&B. And even though I was giving them the radio record... I wasn't Not giving it. them direct music to you. This is yes, when you wake up. or me. Yes. <laughs> or anybody so that wanted So you niggas know this shit while y'all be doing this At least this I know. Shit. I don't know about all these niggas, but I knew what I was doing. I knew that this next project, I wasn't going to produce anything with play. Being the person that I produce every project with. Mm -hmm. This next Love Me Now, I'm not producing nothing with play. Uh, this Memories Don't Die, I'm not going to really produce with play. I'll produce with play on a couple joints. But I don't want them to start feeling like they know our sound. Play will come in two albums after this. Got it. And we came together and we were like, look, this has to be better than anything we've ever done. And it has to be, production-wise, has to be there. Uh, you know, cinematic-wise, it has to be there if it doesn't feel like yeah, it's better. He let the beat rock on the end of all of them. Like, bro, I'm you smoked you, this, man. You nah, did. I appreciate it, bro. Like, and I'm glad that you... You know, you especially as a person who really takes the time to really pay attention, I just know that for people that care, this is really going to be a thing like, I care about this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I really appreciate this and like, damn near, I'm not going to lie, bro, there was a point in time where I listened to the whole project, bro, I damn near dropped a tear, my nigga. You because, should. Because I couldn't believe that I, proud, this is a bro, proud I moment. I, I dead ass could not believe that I did this shit, bro. I couldn't, I couldn't fathom that it was cleared. I couldn't fathom that it was actually going to come out. I couldn't fathom it. So this release date is kind of different than release dates that you've already experienced. Oh, this is totally different because... This is your baby. This is my baby from Chicks Tape 1. Yeah. From... 2011. This is like seeing your baby graduate college or something. My, some shit. my look, look at it. It's like imagine I birthed this this kid in 2011, and in 2019, people still fucking care more than they ever have. Mm -hmm. It's true. You don't understand what I'm saying? Like, just everything about it was fun to me, nostalgically. Just like I don't know if like if when you get when we get out of this interview, you gotta look at my last post. I just redid the um. The Nike commercial, remember when do dee 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 do dee dee with the with the with the everything was fun about this project for me. And that's what people don't understand. It wasn't it didn't feel like I was just rolling out an album again or I was just okay. Time to come back. It felt like cycle. yo, this is a fucking fun, nostalgic, bring me back to sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade feeling. And y'all, you, you, y'all are selling merch with this project. I got the merch, the graffiti merch, the airbrush, shirts, the sweaters, the Go do rags. Sasha, man, what's up? Sasha, man, I'm look, look, I'm, I'm gonna make sure that everybody here in this building gets a care package. It's the first thing I'm gonna that, do. That would be nice. I promise. But now, you gotta wear my shit, son. No, I, I wear merch. <laughs> okay, I, I support <laughs> niggas. You know, I'm, I'm looking at you now. Now this is a lot happening. This is a heavy wrist. This is a lot of rings. 
This I'm trying is, to be the best that like I can be, yo. Twenty of these. This is a wealthy nigga jacket I'm that, you, that you're doing. <laughs> Broke niggas can't just throw the orange shiny shit on. Like, how's this feel? You got, <laughs> a patch, you got patches <laughs> on the crotch right here. Like, I'm just trying to be this, great. This is Child amazing. PKL. I'm just trying to be great, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, Where's this money? This money comes from. We know the tour animal you are. Yeah, definitely. We know the festival machine you are. I think I know the publishing machine you are. It's just like a lot of different avenues of income happening. It's a lot of different avenues, but then y'all also got to look at the artist, you know, that I that I work with. Yeah, you stole Melly. I, I didn't steal Melly. I actually was working with Melly uh, before. That story is still not clear for the public. Okay. Y'all tried to clean it up. It looked a mess. Who tried to clean it up? All I, you I, and Melly. I didn't, I didn't have nothing to clean up. Well, she did. And I love I Melly. I mean, Melly's a girl. Hey, Melly. I love Melly. Shout out to Melly. Melly's a girl. At the end of the day, like, you can't take if, if Melly something's from gonna, if, me. Something, if something's gonna look bad, it's, 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 it's right for her to clear it up. That's but true. What I, what That's I, not my business. Yeah, you know what I feel like um, comes down to everything is me and Melly were working before she even had met me, and I don't think the world knows that. And like, once the world understands that, at least Wait, from the standpoint, say that start, again. You and me Melly and Melly were working. were working before she even met me. But you—that's the wrong question. What do you mean? That—that's misleading. The, the question mean? should be, were you and Melly working before you and Meek met? No? What do you mean? That doesn't matter. No? Me and Melly were working together, literally, like she wanted to be Umbrella beforehand. And I wanted her to be Umbrella beforehand. How'd you see her so early? early? Actually, it's crazy. She sent her, her music to like a few of us, and she sent it to, the, to my assistant at the time. And my assistant had showed me her music. So when she finally got signed, the first time she got signed, he had introduced us. And then I heard her music for real, for real, like in L.A. And this is like when she first, first, first got signed. That was, I think, December of like last year or the year before that or whatever the case is in. I heard her music and I built a, re a relationship with her. Like just musically, like you're dope. I fuck with yes. your shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can literally do first everything that I can do. And it, it, was, it was a shock because, you know, I always try to invest in somebody that I feel like has the same kind of hunger as me. But with her, it was like, I already felt like you can, you can rap, you can sing, you can go Spanish, yeah. you can do all the things that I can do. And she looks great. And you look incredible. And at the end of the day, it's like, I'm not going to sit here and worry about, you know, that's my brother and everything, but I'm not going to sit here and worry about what you and me got going on if, if the situation ain't right. Yeah. At the end of the day, like, if you fit here with people that, you know people that love you, people that want to work with you, people that can help you propel. And it's a decision that has to be made at some point. And you make a decision, the decision is made. And it's not out of no... Uh, I think that uh, another m misconception that the world has is this was done behind Meek's back or it's some da-da-da-da. Yeah, it was malicious. No, deep down behind all the Instagrams and the fuckery, everybody knows what was going on. Got it. Everybody knows what was going on. And at the end of the day, Meek's my brother. I would never cross him. I would never ever make him feel like, yo, I, I did some malicious shit to you. Because I would still like you know? to hear Meek and Tory records. I'm, I've never ever stopped sending Meek records or we never stopped recording songs. Good, awesome. You know, I feel like the, the whole situation with Melly, people feel like it caused a dent in like what me and Meek do. And it's like, nah, we've been the same niggas but yeah, so when, when this situation happened, we got on the phone as men and we talked. Awesome. And we left it alone. Maybe the internet doesn't know that, but we did. Awesome. So my whole thing is just like, you know, um, I'm happy to be in a position where I can help somebody as talented as Melly. You better believe him. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mariah the Scientist. I've been trying to get you her mixtape. Who's but... Mariah the Scientist? Tell me. Okay. Mariah the Scientist is a girl from Boulder Crest, Atlanta. Okay. She's from the hood. And it's so strange that she has this <laughs> Amy Winehouse, Lana Del Rey. Mm. Uh, White girl? Light skin. Mm. Black girl. Got it. You know, at the end of the day, that has this crazy sound to her that sounds nothing like the bullshit that, you know how sometimes we, we need that, especially niggas like me and you, we need that relief. Mm -hmm. She has that. This sounds nothing like anything you've heard. What's her name again? Mariah the Scientist. Mariah, does she have music out? 
She has music out. She just signed the RCA. She owns all her masters. You know you got to be nice to come in the building and just off top own all your masters. No, I don't know that. Or you you got to be or nice. You have that now. You, that ain't true. Or you got to have a great mm, cosign. You got to have a great cosign, but she didn't come in there with that. She came in there. She went in there on her own did, without first, being under the uh imprint. Before before RCA knew she was working with me, she went in there by, her, by herself. Oh, then that's, that's, that's ill then. They knew right, she was one it. of them people. Got She's it. like a Billie Eilish, Davo, Papi Yer, um, and this kid named Mansa. Mansa. Where's he from? He's from Oakland. Oakland. I promise you. The last three names I, I swear that I, that, I, that, I, that I mentioned, I know that the impact that they're going to have on the industry is ridiculous. <clears throat> Just a quick note for our audience. Because we're into informing people and teaching people here. That's another way that you know when niggas is wealthy, wealthy. During the interview, they just start talking about new niggas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in the middle of an interview, when a nigga start giving you a whole bunch of people you've never heard of, I'm trying to tell they you. They got it, got I'm it. But it sounds like you have a whole roster. So you have a whole, you, you have, how's this working? Do you have distribution, or are you getting them distribution through different places under your? What's, what's your incredible is well, Melly and and uh, Mariah they have uh, deals with Melly's with Interscope, Mariah's with RCA. Powerhouses. Yeah, you know. So I like to look at things like this. I never want to be the guy who signed me when I was eighteen. I don't want to be like that. I want to be the person who understands the business a little bit more. You guys are artists. I'm an artist. Meaning that there's times that <laughs> I cannot focus on you. Oh, and yeah, I, yeah, and yeah. I know that. That being said, I don't sign artists knowing that I can't find a specific whole other team yeah. that's going to treat this person the same way that all these people are out here treating the pull-up right now. You understand what I'm saying? That's true. There's a person for cameras. There's a person for lights. There's a person that puts this mic on my fucking mm -hmm. shirt. Shout out to Franklin. Shout out to Franklin. There's a person that does these things. Because at the end of the day, you know, uh, if I'm getting mic'd up at another place, Franklin is still over here working on the pull-up. Pull up. Right? Or one of the other shows that I have. But if yeah. I'm going to do something else, there needs to be a now a, a whole team of people that work on this brand. Audience. What he's giving you right now is his staff. More. <laughs> That's more rich nigga shit. But it's important. <laughs> Yo, staff. I like this shit, man. I want to I wanna, I wanna say shout out to Sasha Stone for introducing me and, and making me understand what staff is. Staff and people that you hire that have these... Uh, these incredible talents that they come with. Some niggas is in tech. Some niggas is in uh, pub, uh, PR. Some niggas is in all these other things. I need you guys to be as great as you can be. And as great as you are, I don't want you to work on my shit. Get the fuck away from me. Word. Stay far from me. Because at the end of the day, I have my own team to work on me. And as great as you are, and as much as I would love to work with you, if I don't... The fact that I feel like I would love to work with you, that's why you need to work with my other artists and give them that. Yeah. Because they need somebody that's individually going to give them that. I'm never going to be the artist that's like, yeah, he's my artist. The fact, the second I say you're a, a, a label mate, that's another thing. I don't look at any artist that I sign as, that's my artist. I look at my shit like, these are label mates. These are people that I signed to be on the same team as me. And at the end of the day, that being so, you're the same as me. I'm not your my boss. Peer. My peer. I'm your peer. Meaning that if I have a team of 19 people that are working on my shit, shout out to Sasha who got 19 to 20 people in Austin working on my shit at the same time, and then my own set of 16 to 20 people working on my own shit at the same time. You just named 40 people, y'all. I'm counting this shit. That's 40 <laughs> employees that's going to make sure that every single day they're focused on Tory Lanez and focused on Mariah, and focused on the other artists. And I say this to say to all you CEOs or CEOs that, uh, you know, want to say, oh, I signed this artist and artist. And that artist is a walking repetition of you. If they don't pop to the point that you popped, 
It didn't happen. And it sucked. And it didn't work. Get the fuck out of here. Suck my dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ladies and gentlemen, that's just Tory what Lane. it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, being honest with you. So, my whole thing is I don't ever want to stab an artist and feel like the artist is not going to be bigger than me. I signed all these artists meaning, feeling like in some sort of way, in some sort of demographic, you fit in a place where you can sell as many tickets as I can mm-hmm. and more. Mm-hmm. And you will do that with a push. And I will not stop pushing you relentlessly until you get to that point. That's hard. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's what I think is going to separate me from a lot of these other dudes who call themselves CEOs or whatever the case is. What people don't really know is like, I've been doing my own shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I've always, when, when the label did what they did, I've always been a person to think and look outside the box and think like, okay, you know what? Regardless <clears throat> of the label or anybody working records or doing things, digital marketing, or besides oh, them niggas see. doing all these things, my money needs to go into these things. Who is the connects? Who are the people that the label is actually using? Who are these people? Well, listen, you know, and I find have, those people, but and I use them independently. You your way into that position, yes. Yes, but at the same time, it's not necessarily that I had to work myself into the situation. I think it's more so... I found myself in a situation because if I didn't look, I'd have been one of those niggas that were on the shelf. As great as I am, Mm. if I didn't do certain things to help myself, and we're gonna we're gonna go into this when we go and I get to the next interview when I come in. If I didn't do certain things to help myself, I wouldn't be here. I promise you that. But my learning of finding people is what helped me find other teams for the artists that I signed. My understanding of you need press, TV, sponsorships, brand integration, everything. You need a whole system. Mm -hmm. And I think me taking myself out of like, I'm an artist in the label, me taking myself out of that mindset is what allowed me to be like, okay, I can sign other artists because I know the formula that they need. And you know that you're not trying to jip them or jerk them. So exactly. Sleep at night. And I know it's like, yo, I've been jipped and jerked myself, and I will never allow an artist like this to have this feeling about me. That's one reason I never attempted to manage an artist or anything like that, because mm. I could never jerk someone. The fucked up thing I about could, it is, I Joe, not. I ain't gonna lie, I think you'd be incredible managing. People tell me that. I think you'd be fucking incredible, because you're a no time. bullshit guy. I'm a no bullshit guy. That shit is so time consuming. It's time consuming, but it feels so good when you see niggas pop. They say that it about me. It feels so they, fucking they, good. They probably feel like they could tell I, I have artists' best interests at heart. But part of that for me is doing it pro bono. Like every nigga that I've interviewed on the pull up or any nigga that I've just spoken to in the last three years, I wanted all of them to win. And I didn't want to be paid if they what did. What about Lil Yachty? Like, you know what I'm saying? He was coming wild winter. crazy at Lil Yachty. <laughs> No, I wasn't. He was coming crazy. No, I'm from... But I'm you from, weren't really I'm, coming crazy. The thing I'm about from, it was, it was I'm that... I'm from New York, and we are aggressive, and we talk with our hands, and we get loud, and I'm not the best at delivering if I'm what not What do you rapping. think? Okay, all right, all right. But my message to Yachty still stands today. It's my message to all That's what I was about to ask you. Know your business. If I had a chance to do it again, remember, Yachty was my very first interview that I had ever done coming out of retirement from rap. Mm. I went to work one day. They said, yo, Lil, Lil Yachty, what's up? I said, who's Lil Yachty? Like, I have no idea. I don't care about who Lil Yachty is as a musician because that's for my kids. But I care about his business acumen because he's going to be a man and he's going to have to pass it down. It's generational. So yeah, I went about the interview aggressively. Do you regret the interview at all? At all? Yep. No, like looking at of, it? No, that was one of my the highlights of my interview great. career. <laughs> great Some energy. of those mistakes where you just can't control yourself, they pan out. The Migo shit, that was great. The Yachty that was, shit, yeah, the, Yachty that was shit the best. Was great. That was the best. But I appreciate that. I appreciate I, I appreciate that camp and I appreciate that time because yeah, you need niggas to say, yo, man. All right, can I ask you a question since we bit. since we niggas like and like yeah, You can ask me anything you want. I'm not like these I, artists. I saw So when you was in the club and niggas was just like I don't know Joe Budden's actually in the club and they were playing Ice Trade the Gang. Would that get you tight or were you kind of like, oh, no, fuck. I love that song. That's what I'm saying. That's what I, I always wanted to ask you this. Like, would it be like a, 
I like I, I, I nah, I'm not feeling this shit. Like no, like okay, like I, I request the song. But okay, but hold on. Well, this you didn't is, have to. But hold on, Joe. This is the right. thing. This is the thing. Okay, you see, like you know, you can hit me with these questions, but I had to hit you with these questions too. Now, was it a thing where, when the Ice Tray song came on, it was like, like for instance, when I was beefing with Drake and they would play a Drake song, I had to dance to it because, because, uh, to because not to not look like, like it was tension, like I, like it like was, was tight in the like face. like I care about, like you know what I'm saying? Mm. But was it at all any percentage of it feeling like, all right, I'm doing this because you know I don't want niggas to feel like I care about this? No, you know what I'm saying? Not at all. I feel that. I feel that. I was grateful to those Migos guys, if you want me to be honest with you. Yo, Joe Budden, when you get away from my rap and hip-hop persona, because niggas have watched me make all my mistakes publicly, I'm really a humble and grateful guy. That's so facts. The, the That's fact facts. That's that something I know put, about you, for sure. Niggas have dissed me for 20 years. Who cares? I've never been dissed in a, in a smash, in a, <laughs> in a hit. Now, this is here's a, a fucked up thing. I'm not going to lie. So I've been in the club, dog, and like... I've had to sing the part, my nigga, because it, it, it's not even that I'm, I'm not even that I'm thinking about, like, for all y'all who don't understand, this is my guy. Like, this guy right here is my actual, this is my nigga. So it's like one of those things where it's like, for me, in the club, the song would come on and seamlessly without me thinking about it, I'd be singing it. Like, if a nigga hating, call him Joe Button. Pussy. But I wouldn't so you be have thinking about it. You have to say pussy right there. And that it, is the genius of... These little dudes, and let me not say the little dudes, but these younger artists, mm -hmm. they may not have been able to be lyrical, spiritual, miracle, all of this shit, but they could brainwash you with their understanding of hooks and melodies and choruses yeah, and how yeah, they sung some shit. There was nowhere I went with it. I Red always wanted to ask you this shit. Every, like. But you know what's funny? And this is going to sound nuts. But everywhere I went, D.C., L.A., Chicago, and this record came on, and I was present. Niggas was it going was like crazy. a salute. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow the Niggas whole was going club crazy. calling me pussy <laughs> was like, yo, I'm still like, yo. Yo, man. <laughs> so, I mean, what can you do but be grateful that these niggas put you in a little smash? I've been in some dishes <laughs> where you ain't never right, heard okay, of them okay, shit. All right, all right, but the first three times that it happened, though, it had to be like, y'all slap this shit out of these niggas. No, the first time. The, <laughs> the first time. The first That's time, like, just, just the in, in, instinctually, <laughs> instinctually as a nigga, if you hear somebody okay, say, oh, 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 Joe, Joe. But wait, wait. Joe, please take me take It's me documented. Through. Wait, hold on, Jay, Joe, Joe. You please. ain't interviewing me. See, I know, I know, I know, I know I'm not, but... You got to take me through the time. You got to take me through when you walked in the club. You got to take me through right when they played it, how the DJ introduced it. <laughs> you got to no, take me through No, they don't introduce it. The they just time. play it. Okay, they, they so you was in the shit. club. He's in the section. And they just played it. Yeah. Out of nowhere. They, did they know you were in no, the club? No, it was a set. It was part of the set. It but was they, in the set. All right, did they know and you were in the club? they knew I was in there. I'm telling you, it became a salute. It's like Pump It Up Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no bullshit. I love that shit. No, no I'm fucking with that. Listen, fucking shout with out that. to Yachty, shout out to Migos. Listen, I want all the younger dudes to have their business right. Um, clearly it is. Like, I got to give I'm it to you, though. I'm in support of everybody. You have definitely changed the narrative when it comes down to how people felt about you. I feel like there was a misunderstanding when the everyday struggle thing would happen because of how real you were with certain artists. But at the same time, like, I feel like there has now been like this thing where it's like he solidifies and you've become this guy where it's like, for instance, when the rap beef happens, me versus Don Q or Joyner, the last word we wait, if you say it, it's like, I ain't gonna lie, damn it, if Joe said it, so it's kind of like, and it became, and it's now becoming to be a thing where it's like your word now is not even looked at. It doesn't matter how you deliver it. It's not even looked at a, as a hating thing. It's more so looked at as a, like a, well, he solidified it. It's now someone fucks up and you say, yeah, you fucked up. It's solidified. You know what large, I'm saying? I think a large part of that is due to just narrative change culturally. Like you got to understand 
for me, and I'm going to get off of me because I'm back to you and Chick's Tape, but for me, all the years that I was like blackballed and called crazy and just made painted to look like I didn't have a, a clue up here is because I was against labels. <laughs> it's because I had a problem with everything that record labels would do to unsuspecting, naive artists. So if you don't have an outlet, people don't know that. So, yeah, the label ain't sending you no interviews. Nobody knows anything. The fans don't know shit. But today, with the narrative changing, all the artists are about ownership now. Everybody is about the label treating you a certain way now, doing the proper deal with you a certain way now. And guess what? If they don't do it, know what you niggas could do? Pull out your fucking phone and paint your own. <laughs> we didn't have that. These are facts. Uh, the generation before me didn't have that. My mom, biggest Prince fan in the world, couldn't pull a phone out and contact Prince. Like the space that y'all are in today is no mistake why the money is ballooned. Like when you niggas sit here, outfit changes, jewelry, icy, that's not by chance. That's because a good fight has been fought for a long time to make What's these up? niggas start respecting the artistry that y'all even capable of delivering. It's for them to even respect artists like you saying, hey, you don't know what you're doing. Wait right here. I'm going to go bring you the six artists that you need to focus on. It's just the time to change. I'm not that self-centered or self-absorbed to think that they look at Joe different. They still hate Joe, but Joe, you could count on like the weather, the, the same way summer, summer, winter is when I don't change. This is true. I keep it. It's Joe. Mm -hmm. And that's why some people love me. And that's why some people hate me. Me and you have a great relationship. We can sit here and kick it for hours all day long. There's some artists, they wouldn't dare sit on this fucking couch. Are you kidding me? I don't understand you why niggas nuts? don't like the, I love this type of shit. Like I love when, that's the great thing about me. I don't. I don't even want my PR team or anybody to come ask y'all niggas the questions y'all gonna ask me. No, your PR seemed chilling. She ain't jumped up. She yeah. said, yep, 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 yep. Because we're not gonna do it. Because we, we're not gonna. Uh, hey, go ahead and shout the sister uh, out. It's, hey, y'all keep, keep this Kelly, up. Kelly, shout out to you. You, for, you heard? Y'all glue Kelly the and music Marty, business together. Marty and Kelly, I love y'all to death. You know, it, you gotta understand for me, I'm a type of person where it's like, I'm straight in these situations because I have no skeletons in my closet. I think a lot of times artists are scared of the skeletons being pulled out their yeah, closet. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's nothing to hide about me. Yeah, nigga, I fucking redid my hair. It costs a lot of money. You can't afford it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, nigga, I fucking, I'm me at, at, all, at all costs. I've been homeless before. I've been at the bottom of when you got to learn humility, you know, and, and, and things like that for me, it makes me unafraid of anything. You know, uh, especially your conversation. Like, I'm so glad that you're in this position now because for niggas like me who want to pop my shit off when it's time to pop my shit yeah. off, which I'm going to do next interview. Yeah, humble brag. Talk know, about it. it. it it's one of them things where it's like that's, we need these outlets to be able to pop our shit. And so, like, for me, I like to always look back and understand and, you know, bring awareness to, like, people like you and, pe and stations like this and things like this because it allows niggas like me to be like comfortable with saying the shit that I want to say and feeling like, yo, regardless if this ends up being a headline or a highlight, it's going to get captured the right way because I was talking to somebody and saying the shit that yeah. I wanted to say. And, 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 you and know? this ain't clickbait driven on, on this side. <laughs> I have a few quick rapid fire questions for you just because I'm nosy and want to know. And because you see, Let's get it. you see, you're looking great, so I gotta ask you. Your tax hit, do you pay your tax hit in one lump or do you spread it out throughout the year quarterly? Okay, me and tax, I'm Canadian, so I get foreign withholding. Yeah, so what you guys gotta realize you is. You niggas get. You niggas get breaks. The government looks out for y'all, man. Nah, it's not really a break. It's just that, you see how you guys pay your tax at the end of the year? I pay my tax right then and there every time I do something. So 30% of something that might be held back because it's foreign withholding, they pay my tax ahead of time. So meaning like, let's say you do a show for 100 bands. Over in the U.S. Let's say, yeah, no. Or anywhere. Mainly, it was really not the U.S. It's mainly so like, like when I go out to places, but whatever. 
you know, let's say in the U.S., you know, there's 100 bands. I have a choice, which better, but basically it's like I can pay my taxes now. Or... Or whatever the case is. So most people will be like, well, we're going to do the foreign withholding, so we're just paying the tax ahead of time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We'll take 30% out of whatever he's going to get on this check, and we're going to pay the taxes. Oh, man. So, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of, it's kind of different for Canadians. Um, but, yeah, definitely, regardless of the fact, you know, it's taxes got to get paid. Right yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, especially for us. Um, yeah, being they in talk America, that shit like, over here, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I know about my shit. That's one thing. Like, I'm not an idiot. I'm not... You know, I'm not stupid when it comes down to to tax and you know. How much how much petty cash do you put to the side for tricking? Tricking, Joe? Do you think I, I want to actually have this conversation with Let's you? Let's do it. Do you think I really trick? Yeah. I know every rapper yes. tricks, right? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Right? Hey, publicist, what the fuck are you Yo, talking about? Yes. I want to say something right yes. now, and I would love. I want to make a bet. I want to make a fucking bet. I bet. There is not one Instagram model, bartender, somebody that could come up and be like, Tori bought me a bag. Tori bought me a... There's Tory not Lane. one. Cause That's how I know that you're tricking good. No, 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 no. no They're no, not going to tell Joe, on you, Joe, baby. Joe, They're going to protect you. Joe, rewind this back. Rewind this back. Hey, I'm, I'm Joe, you. Joe, rewind this back. I need you to understand something. I come from a place of, of, of this. I got a lot of niggas. A lot of niggas in unfortunate situations. A lot of people to take care of. A lot of people to take care of, but a lot of things that's like, I'm not, you got to be doing some, you got to be holding, I don't know, you got to hold a nigga down in some sort of way that's so crazy. They do it out there. They're doing it. I don't know what they're doing for these other niggas, but I can... I put this on my dead mother's grave, nigga. It's not one of y'all bitches could come through. And I say bitches for a reason. I don't even, I'm not talking about every girl. I'm just talking about the female dogs that be acting like nigga dogs. Like the same way, there's not one of y'all that could come up out your face and say, I bought you something that could show something I bought you. Nothing. All I got for chicks is hard dick and bubble gum. Period. Uh, but, but wait, but wait, but wait. This rapper stuff is misleading. That's why you got to dig through it. I love Where this. Let's get it. Where is... Hard dick and bubble gum occurring. This is the if thing I give about you hard me, dick and bubble gum in I'm Puerto Rico, so, nigga, I'm gonna be so. It's for some of them. I'm gonna be so. I'm gonna be a buck. The thing about you me is this: you fucking in exotic places. Mm, no, I'm not. All right, give I'm it to fucking me. at my house. <laughs> 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 what you gotta understand? I don't even like going on vacation. Yo. A vacation is when I get home. So y'all gotta understand, like, Yo, like you, oh, I'm not flying God. you out because I live in Miami. That's number one. Yeah, fly here. It's like... No, do you fly me? You'll be here at some point of the year. I'll catch you. Two. On your own dime. I'm not flying I'll catch you on your own dime. Miami is my favorite place to fly people. Miami's a great place. I love but, flying women there but to let's, talk. Let's, 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 let's get it all in perspective. Like, you're going to come here for Diddy's party. <laughs> you're going to be here for Art Basel. You're going to be here for, for... You're going to be here for a lot of different reasons. And when I roll in loud, you're going to come here. It's and okay. be clear, little mama. Don't talk to me at Diddy's party. <laughs> hey, keep you, your ass you're gonna over be there. At the, you're going to be at these parties. You're going to be in Miami at some point. My whole thing is just like this. Right? Are you a liver? Are you a it's live on sunday -er? You might catch me at live on Sunday. Gosh, might. Guys. Might. I'm not a live on sunday -er every okay. You know, I'm not that guy. You and Stevie but, J? No, you're not going to catch me every day. You're not. I'm not. I promise. <laughs> But I'll say this, the reason why I don't trick like that, right, and the reason why I don't, why I have an issue with it. Because you're in Miami in the tall building that your car can nah, get in the I'm elevator. From, I'm from, I, just, I come from the dock. And your like, car I come from Toronto. To like, like, niggas like that, we used to look, look at, like, that nigga's a goof. Like, you spending your hard-earned money on this girl. That's just how we came up. Yeah. That's how we came up. Like, Toronto learning. niggas trick. It's crazy. No, no, no don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything about anybody else, but this is my broad up seat. Oh, got it. All right. The way I got understood it. things is like, you don't, you know, you don't buy people seamless shit that did nothing for you. What did you do for me? You wasn't shooting with me in the gym. The fuck? Who are you? Yeah, but you Shorty, was... Shorty, not. What do you mean? You're going to tell me. What are you going to tell me right now? 
I gotta buy you something for some pussy that I can get by singing la 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 la? <laughs> Do you know who I am? Not even saying like I'm I'm somebody, like I'm not nobody, but I can sing. See. Like at the end of the day, like I can sing to you a couple melodies and you're gonna drop them drugs. Like I don't have to do these things. I don't Lad have to do these things to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have figured out where the disconnection is between him and I. It was right there in what he just said. When I get to bitch, do you know who I am level? <laughs> Like, do, you, do you hear how I, how I hit these notes, Ma? Then I might be able to get in You got to think about it, right? It's not even that I'm saying it on some cocky shit. It's just like, you're standing here in my house. You're overlooking the city right now. You're on the balcony. Some, some, some <laughs> you're looking, at the gla you're looking through the like, glass hey, doors. You like that boat? You well, can look, be on think, there. But think about this. You're looking through the glass doors right now, mm, and you're like, yo, doors. I already, I already fucked this nigga in my mind. That's how a girl's thinking. And even if she's not thinking that. What a harlot. Think about it like this. Boom, she walks in, crazy crib. I'm, I'm on my smooth nigga time. First of all, I'm talking like this. Yo, shorty, you already I'm talking in that voice. Is you the know robe what I'm on? Uh, the robe's not on, but I'm in something cool. Like, I'm not even, on, I'm not even going to art. You know what I'm saying? There's no jewelry on. I'm just in the crib, and I'm, uh, I'm allowing you to bask in, in the understanding of like what no, this I'm is. You're honest. on the top of the floor. It's wealthy nigga you're looking, shit. It's wealthy nigga shit. So, yeah, you're used to peasantry. You and you're like, now. yo, yo, can I see your balcony? She comes in, she's like, yo, can I see your balcony? I'm like, baby girl, just, just, yo, just run around it. Just slide the just, door just right run, over. Just slide the door, just run around it. It's, it's four more doors you can walk through. It's a wrap you know? Um, and I'm like, at the top. Dad. So It could turn the corner. So she's already crazy. <laughs> and then you got to think about it. We pour a little liquor. We take a couple shots. I start talking to you about, you know, the, the, the things that's going on in your life. You start talking Baby, to me about what I've accomplished. I want to do. You know? All of That's when he's getting in that dog. That's, what, that's what's Benjamin going on. My mind, you looking, right. you looking back, you seeing the fireplace, you seeing all kind of... I love fire. And then, and then I fuck around and hit the Phillips Hue lights, and then, you know, the Hue setting just turns the lights blue. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, <laughs> it turned the lights blue. Shorty's already gone. She's she's the, the vibe. I'm playing the old school music. You know oh. what I'm saying? It's it's a certain kind of vibe that it's like, okay, Shorty, if you're not gonna fuck me at this point, you just didn't want to fuck me. Or and if you didn't want to fuck me, or get to know him. And I, and I say and I say and I say that meaning like, yo, if you didn't, if if we had a long conversation, you know you're attracted to me. I know I'm attracted to you, and a night of passion doesn't come out of this. Then it just was, it, 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 it made that. That even just sounded beautiful. What he you said? know what I'm saying? A night of passion. A night of passion. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yo, I'm never given a night of passion. A and, night of and passion, called it dog. That. But you got to think Yo, about you it. You like, for a night of passion with Joe? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do I even say it? I don't, <laughs> damn. You know, you, you know what I'm supposed to say? I'm just saying, like, it's a night of passion. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you feeling tonight? You, you, the lights is off. They this color in the whole crib. The ceilings is high. You know, we smoking weed, we, we drinking. Man, and this is end, a vibe. This is a vibe. And at the end of the day, like, at, at, after all of it all, like, I can still go. Get out. Oh. No, no, no. I was about to say something sweet. Oh. I can still be like, la, 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 la. And you're going to feel it mm. the way I sing it to you. So it's like, if I can't serenade you and I can't fuck with you off of the sheer fact that we having a good time organically... I didn't want to fuck you. If a bag was what was going to do that without me doing any of these things, <laughs> I didn't want to fuck you. Mm. And that's my whole point when it comes to women. It's like, I have this line with women when they're like, yo, can you buy me this? Shorty, I thought you was up. You can't buy yourself that? Mm. If you can't oh, buy yourself shit. that, you can't fuck with a nigga in my tax oh, bracket. Oh, man. Where are these women? Period. If you can't buy yourself a Gucci bag, you can't fuck with me in my tax bracket if that's what we're talking about. Oh, I'm scared. But luckily, to ask I'm them a down to do earth. For a living. But that's the thing. I'm a down to earth nigga. If short, if you come on some, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about a Gucci bag. I'm not gonna ask you for that shit. I'm not gonna try you like that. But if you have the nerve to try me like I'm a trick and say, "Yo, give me this bag," I'm gonna ask you, shorty, do you not have enough money to buy that bag? And if you don't, don't fuck with me. Mm. He's talking about bags. I'm more so meant like a little I'm just saying. American apparel for shorty. Sure. <laughs> like but shorties be. He's trying to really take be, it there with bags am I lying? and am double I lying? C's and Girls G's. be bugging. Girls be bugging. They try to take it to, this, to these far places. And it's like, yo, huh, if you don't have enough money to do that for yourself or to buy one for me, huh, don't ask me. You told, I miss this freedom. This is a freedom. I hear it. I hear it. And you, you, you're speaking like you don't have to answer to a woman when you I leave don't. Because it's like at the end of the day, it's like yeah, miss no it. disrespect. I love women to death. I don't ever want this to be taken off as like 
I won't do something nice for you. I'll do something nice for you if you're genuinely a good person. You feel me? I haven't ran into too many of those, but you know, every now and then you'll run into a good person, but usually when you run into a good person, they don't care about that type of shit. Excuse me. You know? So for me, it, the freedom comes from, not that I don't have to do this for you, but I don't have to do this for you. With all due respect, there's a million girls in the world, billions of girls in the world, there's only one of me. It's not that many. <laughs> and I think it's one there's, of me too. Man. You know, but there's only one of there's only one of us. I'ma use this shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but you gotta think about it. Like for all my niggas who would just be out there tricking, like, think about it. Like, Shorty, if you can't, if I if you're expecting me to buy this, can you buy this for yourself? And if you can't buy this for yourself, and if you can't meet these lines, then me and you are not in the same. Innuendo. I shouldn't be around somebody who's asking. But I'm not talking about the women that are expecting mm. and, and begging and asking. I'm talking about like a courtesy trick. A courtesy trick. What is that to you, Joe? Allegedly. A courtesy trick would be young lady comes, comes over, young, a young Jezebel. <laughs> you ain't shit. She comes over. <laughs> You guys have a grand, amazing time. Netflixing and chilling. Once? Just Netflixing and chilling. Uh, and then they leave. And because you had such an amazing... And she left. Oh, no, she left too. She left. She left. She's no out of here. No questions asked. Okay. Because she was so thorough in how she did that, go ahead and cash app you a couple of them. Cash app I'm, a a dollars, cash app I'm a cash app because you were thorough. Dollars, man. I liked how you what did What about it. my thoroughness? We what? don't count. What? Men don't count. First of all, let's bring this back. Let's bring this all the way back. Why the fuck did I cash app you? What did you do for me that I didn't do for you? You got a nut, I got a nut, right? No, she didn't get one. She got a nut for me. Oh, not for me. All I'm saying is this. That's why I'm cash happy. <laughs> <laughs> See you? Hey, See, that's the thing. Like, I, I know you probably now weren't ladies, as pleased now, as now, I now, am. Ladies, ladies, Honey. I want y'all to understand. I'm paying for all my mistakes and dick. But so in your prime, understand. like you still got a sling you know? dick when you like got feature like Chicks Tape 5 <laughs> projects and shit coming out. Like I when you when you're done with music, you can just be like I feel you, but ah, this is, I feel this you. This is what it was. My, this is my thing. If Shorty's thorough, right? If she's that thorough. Take that 500, here you go. Why do you need this 500 for? No, you didn't need it, that's why it's a courtesy. No, that, see, that is tricking. Go that ahead. is like, I just genuinely, I just purposely no, it ain't. wanna just, give you this money. Nah, you, for, you didn't even ask me for this money, I'm giving you this, ha, ah, take this baby. You've sent me <laughs> 70 no videos this week and you laced me and I Hold noticed on, that on. your cubicle, you that me, one nail was broke. You sent me 70 videos, you must really wanna fuck me. Come here and get this dick and go home. And go home with an extra five hundred. Go home, go home for free. Because <laughs> no. the thing about it is, it's like first of all, I'm not. I can't I'm believe that we're talking be, about this right now. Because, but this is a but hot this topic. Is, this is an important topic. Entertainers. But this is an important topic. This might be the most viral thing about the whole interview. You got to think about it this way, Shorty. If I dicked you down, and I gave you dick, and you came, go your way, because you gave me pussy, and I came, and at the end of the day. At the end of it all, what are we gonna do? Am I gonna pay you for your no? Lay it, lay in my, lay in my bed. Let's smoke a blunt if you really want to, you know. Let's watch a movie that maybe you want to watch, <laughs> and and go home. It's not, it's not that deep. It's not like, it's not like me saying to Shorty like, yo, you're a piece of shit. No, I'm not saying that. You're, you're, you're beautiful. You're who I wanted, and we both got out of each other what we wanted. You wanted some dick, but I'm tired of this whole like. I'm paying you for you getting some dick. No, like the same way I want pussy, you want some dick. And I'm paying you for some dick? Get the fuck out of here. No, I feel you. I don't do that either. I was just at throwing That doesn't make no sense. How am I giving you dick? You're busting a nut and I'm still paying you. This is the difference. That doesn't make no sense to me. Well, this is retarded. This is the difference between... You're crazy. My fireplace not Now, if I was like working. an old nigga on, Viag on Viagra and like, you know what I'm saying? You like you the Viagra? I never popped any pills in my life. What the fuck? This guy's not even living. You're not paying for pussy and then pop a Viagra. What the fuck are you doing? I, I'm just living my life smoking weed and just being black. Oh, man. Your songs might take it to another level on the Viagra. Imagine me on drugs. 
That's like, what people don't understand. Like, they be seeing me crowd surf and, like, seeing me sing all these songs. They're like, yo, this nigga's taking some kind of fucking drug. He's got to be on coke or some kind of fucking, like, you know, some kind of bean in some sort of way. I've never taken coke or a pill in my life. I would fuck with coke. Coked up Tory. I'm a, I'm a Greenlee. You, you know how coked up Tory would be this would fucking... He'd be a great guy. But he'd be a dickhead. He'd be a bad guy, too. You know I what I'm know, saying? I know, because your nose That's why I'll never be that guy. Coke. You know what I'm saying? But, like, imagine me, like, you on some coke fucking, nose. like... I do got a coke, coke nose, but I just couldn't do it. I, you know, I'm you a strictly greenly, you know, broccoli guy. Like, I don't want. I don't want to do any of that stuff. I feel like you're into that business now. What do you mean? Are you into the weed business now? In what way? I thought I read that you had a can of something. Cannabis yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm definitely in the business in that kind of way, for sure. Definitely. Um, um, I have uh, a couple of situations now. I had this one thing I was about to uh, drop called Diamond Rock, but the licensing on that shit was so hard to get. That I just like was like, okay, let me leave this shit alone for a second. Um, but I have two other things that I'm about to do right now. And this other thing that's actually really dope, it's like all accessories. It's, it's called Trap Truck LA, pretty much. Where it's like all these rare backwoods and rare like sodas that people sip lean out of. And, <laughs> in a truck? In a truck. They're going to drive. Yeah, it just drives around LA and it's does called... That, does that need different licenses than a regular... Uh... No, actually, it's because the truck is so small that it's okay for it to park anywhere. Wow. You know, so it's it's uh it's little different things that I that I think that you know that's hard that I'm into now. You know, it's, as far as like it being a business. Oh, Sasha's like not that. playing, man. Sasha, the work that you have done over the course of what five years, four years is just. I'm taking it's it ridiculous. back, man. I'm, su- I'm, it's I gotta, I'm super proud of you, man. I'm super proud, not just you, but Sasha as well. Your entire team. I thank you. Like, man. it appears that y'all are just doing it the way that it, it should be done and having a fuck of a time enjoying yourselves Definitely. doing it that way. Oh, wait, lastly, before we go, because I am I I just have to cover these beefs. You and Joyner are cool? I'm cool with Joyner. I've always been cool with Joyner. I know, it appeared that way. We like that. I like the you engagement. Know. I'm sad yeah. that more women are not in the battle rap, but we'll get into that later. Uh, Don Q, you and Don Q? Don yes. Q, That blessed. was nice, too. That was blessed. You know, that was a cool, that was a cool round. Now this, I felt like I won both of those. You're going to feel like you won them all. But I mean, like, I feel like unanimously, dog, like, it's like, uh, yeah, nigga won both of those. But whatever. It is what it is. I could be just going off some artist shit and thinking something that, you know. The fact that you jumped right back in it so fast with such a skilled MC after having done it with such a skilled MC, I don't care what the outcome <laughs> is. Because that's I feel six, like- however many rounds... I feel with like niggas that's looking to chop, your and I'm head going off. back, back and forth, yeah, and back and forth, yeah. dog, relentlessly. No, you did that to the point where it was like 150 MCs that was like, "Yo, where's this Tory Lanez, nigga?" <laughs> yeah, it's like, "Nigga, I'm sick of R&B, fuck out of here." Yeah, you know what I'm no, and at, and at that time you was just ready for war with any and everybody. I'm still ready for I was, war. I was gonna call your phone when, when you, I don't know what happened where you was addressing Royce for a second. But y'all did that on your own, and it was like, "Go oh, great, awesome." We like, "Yo, you wasn't, you wasn't slaughterhouse." Well, I was, yeah. Oh, so that must have been like a thing to you. Like, what do you mean? Like you must have, like you no know Royce. him. Like you no, know, Royce is my brother. That must have been like kind of weird. Like Tory's my bro, but see, Royce is my bro. Like fucking these niggas even. No, because Royce is is older like me. Yeah, so, and sure. we have a, a good understanding of why some things happen. Sometime. Yeah. So when you said that shit, oh yeah, I get it. You in war mode. Hey, hey I'm, I'm misunderstood. Niggas is mistaking me. Whoever wanted, this is where I'm at with mine. I didn't think Royce would take it that way if y'all spoke. I didn't think so. Yeah, I feel what you're saying. No, I didn't think, I didn't, um, when, when the whole situation with Royce happened, I just looked at what, what was said and I was just like, damn, nigga, you some nigga that I used to listen to back in the days, my nigga, fuck you hating on me for it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I think at the time I took it like, this nigga's just hating on me, but in all reality, he just had an opinion. Mm-hmm. And that was why the only person out of that whole time that I ever was like, yo, my bad, mm-hmm. it was yeah. Royce, because it was like, Royce, I already li- I'm already a fan of your shit, bro. And number two, okay, maybe you just, you had your own thoughts on it, and I just wasn't fucking with your thoughts and opinion. Which is also an opinion you're entitled to have. You know what I'm saying? But well, Royce is not where I was going. The beefs heated up, and I sided with Dream Doll. <laughs> I don't care who wrote it. I don't care. 
I don't care either. Oh, people wrote it. I, I say this, bro. Out of everybody who had a diss record at that time, Dream Dolls was the best. You know what I'm saying? She was all right. It was fire. It was good. And I'm never ever going to be like, yo, you didn't. <laughs> nah, like at the end of the day, you did what you were supposed to do, regardless if it was wrote, written by you or <laughs> written by anybody else. The way you delivered it sounded convincing and it was good. That's it. You, that's all it takes. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so, like, you know, fuck it. And then this one, someone, someone had to remind me of. I forgot that this was a thing. The Travis video that had leaked. Travis. How many Travises are there? Scott? Yeah. What about him? Where do y'all stand? I'm cool with the nigga. I'm, I mean, I don't know how that video actually ended up getting leaked because from where the, you know, the camera was, that's like where his homies were standing at when the whole situation was going down. Mm. And so I think he thinks that like I leaked it, but like what he doesn't realize is I get no cool points out of looking like I'm gonna fight you, nigga. Like mm. I love Travis Scott's music, my nigga. You it's know weird. how long I've been wanting to work with this nigga, bro? Yeah, and that's why wanting I to work with this nigga for years, bro. And it's like, cause that makes I, sense. I, I, I'm I just hate the fact that so many little tiny things in between that stopped us from working. And so like my whole thing is just like, you know. I'm a stand-up nigga, bro. I'm, I come from nothing. I come from being homeless. I come from the bottom, my nigga. If you run in my trailer with a bunch of blood niggas, I'm on that type of time, period, period. If you want that type of time, I'm on that type of time. And I think that but when, when he ran in there, <laughs> I think that when he ran in there, he just wasn't expecting me to be on that type of time. Yeah. I have this bad temper where once it starts spinning in this circle, my eyes, they go black. I don't even know what the fuck is going on. It's like this, this thing and it keeps going. And the more it goes, the more crazy I'm going to get. And I felt like he was just spinning the, the wheel for me, you know, at a, at a certain point. And, you know, I wish the video never surfaced because even if that happened and I looked a certain way and he looked a certain way, I never want the world to yeah. feel like that. I wanted that to be something that we know about each other. Because after that situation, we sat there and we reconciled for an hour. Got it. You and know those what are I'm the saying? Videos that don't come out. And those are the videos that don't come out. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I think that the internet made it such a thing that it's like now me and this person might not never get a chance work. to work, bro. Which would be horrible. Which would be stupid. Be and it's like Travis, like. Niggas want us to work, bro. And I want to work with you, bro. Fuck all the other shit. I want to work with you, my nigga. That I'm not... Hard. You know what I'm saying? That like, I'm, I'll put my ego aside and say, bro, I want to work with you, bro. Not because of anything else or anything that's going on. Just because I always thought you was dope. You know? I just didn't understand why you was coming at me like that. Man, I like mature Tory, man. I do. This is you awesome. Know? That's another trait of wealth. Maturity. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I think I have. Easy. I think. Oh, my last question. Just is my last question. Just because I have it. to know how does the release of does the release of Chicks tape affect how you gonna how you gonna plan on releasing your next album, your next uh, rap mixtape? Like, are you gonna chill for a year now? You gave it no. To I'm him. not gonna chill this. for a year. I'm gonna be back in 2020. Ridiculously. Got it. This has been an amazing uh, interview. That, uh, this has been great. I want to thank Tory. <laughs> I want to thank Tory Lanez for coming by. Uh, they already know Chicks Tape is fire because it should be out by the time they see this. But amazing project. Love. Congratulations. I will be back here with another interview. Yeah. That will be more amazing than this one. <laughs> Love, my brother. Love, nigga. The piss I got to take right Me now. Me too. Oh, That's why I was trying to wrap up. I'm like, gosh, I'm rushing to the bathroom. Damn. <laughs>